And we are back. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We are joined by a very, very special guest. Thank you very much, Noah AK, uh, for those that don't know, plays Rin on Star Trek Discovery. Thank you very much for joining us. How the devil My are you? pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here. Uh, in the... Uh, when Before we, we came on, I was saying that, you know all your followers and viewers have done such a great job donating and, and helping this organization. But you guys were saying that you didn't think that they were going to hit the goal and <laughs> they aren't capable of doing it. So I believe that they can do it. You guys don't think that they can. So I don't know. I just thought oh, that was interesting. I bow to your infinite wisdom on that. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot tell a lot. I'm kidding, of course. <laughs> I'm, I'm super excited to be here. Glad to be here. How are you guys doing? How's it going so far? And hello to everybody. Hello to everybody in chat. I'm looking at chat so I can see you all out Fantastic. there. Not getting away with anything. Oh, yeah. So keep in mind, Noah is a seasoned Twitch streamer. Oh, yes. uh, I think Idle and I Pro duck in every so often. <laughs> yeah, when he's playing Star Trek Online, etc. Mm -hmm. You can find him twitch.tv slash the type one Trekkie, uh, number one. Or on Twitter at n underscore a underscore k. So oh, we have a special guest uh, as well. We have, we have the uh, we have my my classic uh, streaming companion, my cat, who gets extremely angry when I pay attention to anybody <laughs> except for him. Hold on, maybe if I give him a sticky note, he'll leave me alone. <laughs> um, yes, I stream all the time. I got a new camera out. See, look at this. I'm, I'm making it up. He's fighting me. Okay. <laughs> There we go. This is this is what it takes. So pay no attention. Is that cheese? Cat. No, it's a sticky note. Uh, he just oh. has to eat some paper. <laughs> Brilliant. This is the show. I wonder if that would work with with stars and me when when we get a little too uppity on the show. <laughs> exactly. No, All right, folks. Another reminder: um, a link in chat right now. If you donate while Noah's on and include a question for him in the description of your donation, we are legally obliged and morally obliged to to, to wow. ask him yeah. on stream. Wow! Wow! We'll keep it hot. I had um, no say in that, so now I'm now I'm really excited. I'm sorry, it was in the contract you yeah. signed before you came on. Yeah. So. It's in the document. It's very tiny writing, right at the bottom. You probably would have missed mm -hmm. it. Um, but yeah, no. Thank you for coming and help support us. Um, just got a few questions. We we, we polled our subscribers uh, a few weeks ago. We told them the news before everyone else, and we we got a few questions from them. But um, for, you know, the first question, you know, everyone wants to know because you're a lifelong Trek fan before you even played the part of. Rin on Discovery, you've been, you know, you've shown off photos and everything of uh, you and your mother, especially uh, going to Star Trek conventions and things like that. What what got you specifically into Trek? It was my, uh, my mom. Yeah. Um, she, it was less of like a thing, like, are you interested in this? And more like, this is your life. You know, this is your birthright and you will accept this. You will go to the <laughs> conventions. I'm not really interested in whether or not you're having fun or not. You have to do this. It was like, it was like getting bar mitzvahed. I was like, my dad was like, you're just doing this. You're getting bar mitzvahed. I don't really, I don't give a shit. And my mom was the same way where she's like, you're going to Star Trek conventions and you're going to like it. Um, and what she would do, she would just ask like a friend of mine, like, you know, we were in middle or high, not high school, we were in middle school or elementary school. And she would just like get a friend and uh, say, hey, we're going, we're going for a day. And the friend would get in the car and be like, where are we going? Thinking that they're going to, um, you know, uh, a water park or a laser tag. And then we go to Star Trek convention. So <laughs> it's borderline kidnapping. <laughs> you know, to, to be fair for some of us, that would be, you know, better than a water park and such. So <laughs> I listen, it was it, no judgment on that. It was just, you know, my mom's way of doing things. Fantastic. So she's she's the the one that watches your streams all the time, sort of going is like, is that right? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yes, yeah. She's it's all fan. for her. How how exactly. did she, how did she find out when you when you got the part of Rind? How did she react to that? Was over the moment? Was, was there you a know, surprise party? Getting the part, I really tried to keep expectations very low for her because it wasn't clear what I was going to do on the show. I wasn't you know, sure if I was going to have a line, you know, or two lines or one episode. So. For that, I really tried to just pump the brakes and reality check and not get overly excited, you know. So there wasn't a big thing that I remember. She did maybe go. To, she did maybe when I told her, 
she did go grab a uh there's like a an enterprise model that's like in gold i think it's like the 50th anniversary or something like mm -hmm. that that she had and she did grab it and just start flying it around the house over zoom so that <laughs> that was what she did to be excited but i tried to keep it tried to keep it um manageable for that <laughs> Okay, uh, one from one of our community. Uh, Hi, Noah. Being a Star Trek fan yourself, and this is related, so please describe your feelings and emotions that you experience when you get that phone call to confirm that you're going to have a part in the latest Star Trek show. How does the first know, 24 was, hours feel? It was funny because, because again, that I, when they told me I was going to do it, I didn't know what I was going to do, and I wanted to keep a level head and, you know, not freak out, and I was like, well, it could just be, you know... A line which would be a, which would be a dream come true but i didn't want to you know too high only for it to come crashing down i want to kind of keep my expectations in line so going into it i was just trying to go with the flow you know not 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 mm -hmm. not get wrapped up in anything um but really it was my first day on set which was we shot a scene it was like at, at the end of the first episode i was lying in this hospital bed unconscious after i got shot and sonequa and david were sort of having a conversation over me and i was in the mask and um i was lying there and i had my med bay space blanket and i couldn't believe it i couldn't believe i was in sick bay i couldn't believe i had a hud display and i was lying there looking up at david and sonequa just grinning just sort of <laughs> smiling <laughs> while they're doing rehearsal and, you know, they're kind of, you know, doing that. He's going to be okay, blah, blah, blah. And Sonequa, very, very sweet. You know, she looks down and she goes, are you going to do that during the whole scene? <laughs> and I thought, oh, shit, I have to, like, act now. You know, I think for, like, it wasn't just 24 hours. It was, like, for the full week where they were sort of makeup testing me and I was getting drips and drabs of what I was going to be doing. Um, I was just so excited and just going with the flow and just sort of like geeking out and having the fun looking and, and like when, like literally right before somebody said action I was like oh crap like <laughs> I actually have to do this now so it was it was sort of an extended um, uh, a couple of like a week of just sort of being in fantasy land which was amazing I bet and something you wouldn't trade for anything. <laughs> Oh, no like, way. There's, there's a few Star Trek friends we, we know here and, and all, also actors probably watching you right now going, ah, no. <laughs> but, um, yes, yes. People often ask me, you know, how do you get on Star Trek as an actor? And yeah. the answer is to just marry well. Yeah. Marry well. Uh, <laughs> yes. For, the, for those that don't know that your wife is Mary Wiseman. Or, or, or Mary Wisely. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mary Wisely. Love it. Um, you, uh, just a sidetrack as well. You, you're, a, you're a huge fact. Uh, a huge advocate for supporting diabetes courses with yourself being type one that's you know the type one trekkie that is your sort of mm -hmm. your identity you've taken forward in your twitch streams like um when you were sort of first diagnosed you know how did how did you find that how did you because we're sort of we're, we're dealing with mental health that's our cause this 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 uh this year how did you find sort of the struggle with coping being um diabetic with your your own mental health you know in general Type 1 diabetics are 30% uh, uh, more likely to deal with mental health issues. They're 40% more likely to have eating disorders. So mental health is a really, really big factor in the ability to care for yourself uh, when you're talking about type 1 diabetes. Um, so, you know, as on a whole for the community, it's, it's, a, it's a real... Um, hey, Fleur, I'm looking at Fleur 8B, another type 1 diabetic out there. Hello, friend. Um, it's a, it's a it's a real thing for the community um you know mental health is just a big part of it there's a lot of sort of uh uh you know you have to make about 240 extra decisions a day and it's very taxing and the the, the stakes are very high um you know for me i think that i took like six months off of life and i played madden and uh i watched um the outcast hey uh, video and britney spears is toxic video about 400 times because <laughs> uh, that was what was on mtv as i took six months off of my life and then you know i i, I kind of got back into it and was you know felt pretty good and, and in control of my life for a, a while and then as i've sort of gotten older and uh 
it's just become, uh, you know, something that I've tried to focus more on the way that, you know, different blood sugars can give you mood swings and just recognizing that and, you know, trying to give yourself, uh, cut yourself some slack when things aren't going the way you planned. And that can be, you know, a struggle mentally and emotionally. Um, and, um, yeah, yeah. I just, I just think that, you know, as I've gotten older, just trying to incorporate that when you're younger, you're just kind of go, 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 yeah. go, go. Uh, you don't really slow down to think about it as much, but, um, as I've gotten older, it's definitely become much more uh, a part of the way that I, mm, I'm in maintenance, you know, yeah. to, to take care of myself. You've been in moments of self-discovery and you sort of, you've learned about yourself as you've progressed with the, you know, yeah. progressed with the, the diagnosis. And getting older. Ooh. <laughs> Annoying. You get to that, yeah, you get to that certain age and you get an ache and it never goes away. That's there for you the exactly. rest of your life. <laughs> exactly. It's annoying. Um, okay, yeah. before we move on to the um, questions from our subs who submitted them earlier on, let me get caught up on donations here. A big one from Dangavin who says, thank you for all that you do. Thank you. One from Just Joseph who says, hugs and thanks for the heartfelt shares. One from Rev Damar, um, who we see <laughs> every week in chat. One from Best Efforts, or Katie, big one from her. Thanks for all the laughs and entertainment. I wish you guys all the best and hope the stream is a big success as I know it will Thank be. You. Be sure to give stars a good ribbing. Yes, he'll be here in a few hours. Um, one from Anonymous, who's uh, a question for Noah. If Scott Bakula and Ethan Peck had a love child, would they be named Scott and Peculo or Ethot Bakupeck? Mm, that's a tough question. <laughs> Ethan Peck and Scott Bakula. I think it would be... Well, I think it would be just like... Um, chin man just a giant <laughs> just a just a really strong chin okay brilliant and also it's funny because ethan's back i don't know if you guys have seen but ethan's back is fucking huge the dude is like a total rock climber freakazoid oh, really? and his back is just like massive he's absolutely stacked the dude See, can absolutely you've... kick my ass well, now you've um, said that i'm gonna watch strangely wells and i'm just gonna be looking at his back that's all i'm gonna look I, for you, listen <laughs> it's gonna take up the whole damn screen man the dude Dude's freaking Jack, so I think it would probably just be Ethan Bakula is probably the best name for him. All right, a question from No Name Namer: How long did it put? How long did it take to put makeup mm. on and take it off? I'm sure you get this one a lot. It, so, so starting out, it took about five and a half hours because you paint the mask. Right, the mask is just sort of this general blue color. Um, and they paint it and you have to kind of learn how to paint it. So it takes, uh, you know, it's not, it's, it's not like uniform every time and you sort of have to find the groove and find what works and, and try stuff out. So the early, you know, week or two, um, uh, it took, took a little bit longer. And then I was also had this beard, um, and that had to get glued on strand by strand and then cut to my face. So that added oh, like wow. an extra hour and a half and was a massive pain in the ass. And they got rid of it. So um, 4 a.m. starts, 3 a.m. starts kind of. Yeah, 100 percent. 100 percent. I was there so early. Um, and then, you know, after people got a little bit more in the routine of like, OK, this is how we paint it. They got rid of the beard. They got down to about three and a half hours, give or take, depending on the day. Um, and it took about an hour to take off in total. Oh, wow. You know, they have to cut it off your face and basically like de-glue it from your face and like, you know, make sure that there's no sand in your eyes and you know, all that all that good stuff. So yeah, it's it's a lot. It's a it's a it's a really it's uh a lot. It's you know, when you hear people like be like, I don't want to do it anymore, it's driving me crazy. I don't want to come back to the show if I have to wear a prosthetic or any show, not just Star mm. Trek. Uh, they're not making it up. <laughs> <laughs> I totally understand. You know, one of the nice things was sort of understanding that, like, you know, even even you know, knowing I had like some sort of limited run, setting my mind to be like, all right, I can make it through, you know, however many weeks. But I don't know how. You know, somebody like, well, I don't know how Doug does anything he does for starters, oh, yeah. but just the mindset of having it be 
okay, every day for the next nine months, I'm going to go through this. And Doug, and then times it five, five for what Doug does. I don't know. It's, and, and I, I was, I consider myself fairly adept at dealing with the mask and not somebody who it really drove crazy. But I think any, any person would be driven insane. Is that um, something you'd, which you'd is, look into do again? Would you would you go back on, regardless of Star Trek or any other show, and do sort of makeup work again? It's fun, you know. It's a really exciting acting challenge because it uh, it's like it's it's mask work, you know. It's like it feels something very um, elemental about it because like it's almost you know you're you're having to work with this other thing, right? It's not like your face is painted and it's it's just like something on top of it it's something that's very separate from your control and you really have to work with it and it's a fun it's a fun acting thing and it takes some of the acting pressure off you because you have to like work in tandem with this other thing you have to make this other thing come to life mm. as opposed to just um not just but as opposed to doing what you would normally do in acting which is you know you just have yourself it's almost like having a scene partner in every second in a very fun and sometimes frustrating way, but, but it's different and it's fun. I, I remember a, a, um, an interview with, uh, Jeff Combs who played another Andorian sure. in enterprise. And he said, you know, with the antenna being controlled by someone else, it was like yeah. having a dance partner. You have to act yeah. your thing and then they have to sort of work with you. So I, I asked him about those antenna, and he just loved them so much. I was so jealous of him and, and all that stuff. And, you know, it's funny. I don't think they would ever do the the mechanized antenna again, you know. Is that why they the cut most... yours off? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's probably a thought about it, yeah. I think I think if they would ever, you know, I'm sure at some point they'll kind of have them move around. But it will all be CGI, you know, which is fine. Sure, it just yeah. is what it is. Um, but I, it, it just is... It, it's, it was really it's really fun to watch those um, uh, those uh, uh, actual things get to move in space. And then you know it's funny because you look at that and then you look at his face in HD on your nice TV and you're like, they didn't even freaking finish painting his face. You know what I mean? <laughs> you can no. just see it in the corner of his lips. You know, it's it's funny to go back having gone through the level of detail that goes not to, to say nobody did a good job, or whatever. You're just working for a different kind of TV, you're working under different circumstances. Mm. You know, but you can see the inside of his lip and you know, I'm getting painted like all the way oh, up wow. in the in the back <laughs> of my brain and down my down my mouth. Um so it, it's just a totally different thing now, uh, but it's awesome. And, and I love, I love, obviously I love Shran and I love Jeff and, and uh, I, I love that character and that look. <laughs> okay. We should get cracking on some of these questions or people are going to get mad that they, <laughs> theirs weren't asked. Uh, when you, when you were given the reign of role on discovery, how much information were you given about how you should play? The... Did you ask that one? I know, I like that. No, it's good. You said the ring of roll. I like it. It's a fun oh, okay. little <laughs> I'm giving you a hard time because I'm a jerk. <laughs> no, I thought he had already read that off. Uh, they just want to know, were, were there strict guidelines on how you're meant to play it, or did they kind of let you so put your own ideas the in? the thing it? is that, you know, I went in, and I didn't know what I was going to be doing. Uh, they were the, 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 the makeup guys, you know, um, Ian, who played the Orion forget the character's name uh, they were like are you playing the orion are you playing the andorian um they didn't know and part of the thing is you know so so there was no like oh well this is how you you know you have to do it part of the thing is that when you hire an actor you know i had to audition so i had the general vibe of what i could bring to it although the sides weren't the same they were in the same world you know they were similar uh you kind of have to just let them do their thing, you know? You, you kind of have to trust that the actor can pull off this character. So there wasn't strict guidelines about what I should or shouldn't do. Um, it was, it was, yeah, you know, it was, it was just kind of make it work, you know? Just don't smile, on the bio, or don't smile on the bio bed. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay, uh, do you want to do the next one, or shall I? No, that's uh, that's all you, man. <laughs> in the dead of night, your wife jostles you awake in a panic. She exclaims that the world is quickly coming to an end. You ha only 
have the ability to, but only you have the ability to save it. But first, you're hungry. What do you go downstairs and grab to eat while you contemplate being a global icon and an international treasure? <laughs> what is my, wait, so the question is, what is my midnight snack as I yeah. contemplate? All right, what is my midnight snack? Usually, all right, I might have some Applejack cereal, maybe some Cinnamon Toast Crunch, <laughs> maybe some grapes and orange. Something quick. Uh, something quick, yeah. yeah. I'm not going to make a full meal. I might have some ice cream. I might accidentally eat some ice cream. I can't be held responsible. Okay. Uh, was acting with prosthetics anything like you expected? How much did you have to lean on people like Doug Jones to learn how to emote with all that rubber on your face? Yeah, I, I definitely did not expect uh, what this was going to be like. I had no idea. Nothing could really prepare you for it, honestly. I, I got... I solicited advice from Doug and from Mary Chifo and from Ken Mitchell, who I think are sort of the masters of of this kind of stuff, at least in, in Star Trek and in, in sort of modern Star Trek who I had access to anyway. Um, and a lot of them, a lot of the advice was just, you know, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> it was like you can do it. And, you know, part of the issue this character that I faced was that they were very s contained and I don't want to say small, but very internal, you know, they weren't, they weren't having, there wasn't big physical gestures. It was very natural, you know, like with Doug, he sort of has been able, he's such a, an amazing physical actor. He's been able to create all these amazing Kelpian movements and stuff. And yeah, with yeah. Klingon, exactly. Yeah. And with Klingons, you know, there's just so much, you know, to do there. But for Andorians, you know, the precedent is that they're 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 not doing extra gobbledygook. They're trying to, you know, they're tough. They're 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 direct. They're they are they're generally on their feelings. You know, how they feel is how they're acting. So if they're feeling beaten down, they're going to act beaten down for the most part. Generalization. So I was I was like a lot of the advice is, you know, you have to be big and stretch the mass, but that's not really gonna work in this case. Um, and so I got on set the second day and I was like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm screwed. You know, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. This thing is, I, this is a disaster. And I had a couple of scenes with David Ajala and, you know, so when they'll shoot something and you can walk over to the monitor and you can watch it play back right away. It's, it's just immediate. And so David did some stuff and I went over to the monitor and I watched it. I said, that's really good. He's, yeah, he's doing good. What if I just copy what David's doing? <laughs> he does not seem to be doing much, and it's totally working. So if I just try and do what David does, maybe it'll work out for me. Mm -hmm. And that was sort of my game plan is just, you know, David is, has these incredibly emotive, large, expressive eyes. He does very, very little, but just sort of radiates and energy and tells this incredible story. And I thought... Okay, well, if David can do it, I could probably do it half as good, and that'll be good enough. Um, and maybe, you know, this crazy detailed mask will kind of make up the other half. <laughs> and, you know, the only thing that I really have access to that is really my, my physical body is my tongue which I don't really think is a good acting tool for this character other than talking, you know, it, he doesn't have like a little snake tongue, but I also have the whites of my eyes, you know, so I had contacts, but I didn't have full contacts. Like Doug has full contacts that covers all eyes, but I, my whites my eyes. So I thought maybe if I can like try and tell his emotive story through the eyes and not really too much about trying to manipulate the mask and actually let people sort of, project the story onto this very interesting face, you know, very, um, sto uh, there's a, there's a real story on that face because it's such a wild alien, you know, you, you can't help but sort of project a story into that. And if I can tell his emotional journey through the eyes, sort of like David is doing, then maybe, maybe I'll be able to sort of get the story across. Um, so that was sort of my plan is just copy David and <laughs> kind of draft off him. <laughs> so it's all in the eyes. <laughs> exactly. A donation question, and uh, we'll get back to reading the the other donations um, after Noah leaves us, but we want to <clears throat> maximize our time with him. From <laughs> Nuff Enough, who asks, what is your favorite race in Star Trek? 
I mean, it's notorious. What are we talking about? <laughs> hey, they paid the money. We have to read it out, you know? <laughs> yeah, um, definitely. I will just sidetrack quickly. You've. Um... Hey, I'll say this. I'll say this. I'll say this. Second favorite race? Sure. Cardassians. Oh, that's a good yeah, answer. I'm going there. I like that. And why? You just like their uh, their look, or is think, it their? No, I just think they are. I love the type of characters which they're allowed to, um, which they sort of present, which is like um, you don't really know what they're up to. You don't know if they're good or bad. Uh, you know, they I love how manipulative they are how they're sort of playing this chess game, but there's nothing reading on their face. You know, they're always lying all the time. I love that. Super fun characters to play. There's someone in chat named Damar who agrees with you. So <laughs> Yeah, I see that. Yeah, it's the canar. Yeah, it's, I'm drinking too much of that, that, that good stuff, man. I think with your streams, you definitely need a twisty bottle right next to you. Just swig out of one of the uh, canars. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Just sidetrack slightly. Um, you've been doing um, a D&D campaign with some fellow mm -hmm. um, Discovery mm -hmm. cast, including uh, Anthony, Anthony Rapp, uh, Blue Del Barrio, and Ian Alexander. Um, how did you convince them to start playing D&D &D with you? Because this is something that evolved on the Discovery set, wasn't it? Yeah, we have a game today for everybody uh, uh, in chat. We have a game at 4 Eastern time today. It's over on disco underscore does underscore D&D. &D. Mm -hmm. um, so it started because, you know, we were planning on going up before season four. Everybody was sort of going up to Toronto. This is all, this is in 2020 still. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everybody's miserable. Everybody's unvaccinated. Everybody's freaked the hell out. Nobody knows what's going to happen. And I think I saw that Anthony had tweeted he had been playing some D and D, and I had been thinking about trying to start like a D and D game when I was up there in 2019. But then I got on the show, and I was like, "Well, I don't need to do this." <laughs> um, and so I think, you know, maybe I texted, I messaged Anthony, or tweeted at Anthony, and then maybe Blue saw, and then we we're on a call, like sort of a Zoom call with the cast, and Blue was like, "Oh yeah, Noah's running a D and D game." And I was like, "Whoa, okay, news to me." <laughs> um, but then, you know, in our in our time up in Toronto, it was just a really, really isolating. And look, this is for everybody. It's not just for us. I think everybody understands the experience I'm talking about. In 2020, it was just isolating and miserable, yeah. and everything was closed, and it was freezing because it was winter in Canada, and everybody was uh, miserable. And one of the great Parts of being a part of that cast is the camaraderie, the weekends where you can just hang out and, you know, and everybody at that point was so tired of Zoom drinks and nobody wanted to go on Zoom and talk about work, you know. So uh, we all sort of got this little D&D &D game going and became a way for us on the weekends to hang out and get to know each other. It was all over Zoom because we weren't allowed to be in the same... Mm -hmm domiciles yet uh and uh yeah it was just for us to hang out and and it gave us a chance to like go on these adventures together which we would have done you know in 2019 out at a bar or a restaurant or at somebody's house we get to do them in our little fantasy world um, and then uh, i don't know you know people had people responded so much to Anthony's little recaps that he posted and people were so wanted to see it streamed and we did a live game at Star Trek Las Vegas and it went, it went over really well and people had a great time and really enjoyed it and it was fun and silly and everybody, you know, even if you didn't know anything about D&D was just really into mm -hmm. it. Um, and a lot of people were feeling left out, rightfully so, you know? So we thought, well, let's just put it on the internet and see what happens. And it kind of just gives us a chance to keep playing TNT together, which is really all we're trying mm. to do. You know, you're just constantly looking for excuse to have a regularly scheduled D&D game. So that's ultimately <laughs> what's going on. And hopefully people enjoy it and reap the benefits from it. But it's really for us. I remember I 
Go on. That sounds a lot like our streams because, <laughs> you know, we also do a, a Star Trek D&D &D, and it's like, even if we had, you know, one viewer, we'd still do it yeah, just because exactly. we love doing it. I think exactly. I remember, I remember uh, tweeting at uh, Anthony Rapp on, on Twitter when he first started doing it and I was saying, oh, there's a, there's a Star Trek adventure setting. You guys could do that. And he goes, no, that's my day job. I don't want to do that <laughs> yeah. for my day job. So I was just like, yeah. Actually, no, fair point. I do agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> but who else yeah. can say that? Like, Star Trek's my day job. I'm not doing that. Come on. <laughs> yeah, people, people were asking Anthony to do that for a while and Anthony was like nah I'm good <laughs> it was Fair very enough. funny very <laughs> funny but I do have the adventure set someday yeah. I'll play it once once yeah. Modiphius gives me some money to do it I'll put it <laughs> on yeah. we've got we've uh, for those interested we've got a uh, Star Trek Adventures little module uh, later our, our GM stars one of our GMs he's going to do a Captain Proton module later so <laughs> I'll link guys in that when that when that comes up it should be a lot of fun um, uh, from our uh, so I'll just go through a list from our subscribers. Uh, what character from any Star Trek shows would have made you the happiest person in the world to perform? So anyone existing, what what kind of, if you were to take a new in, uh, interpretation of that? So this is always a tough question because it's not saying that I would do it better because the person has already done it perfectly and they are perfect. Um, so that's not what I'm saying. The character I think I love the most, and I'm not alone in this, is is Garrick. It's such a mm. fun, interesting character. The reason it's interesting and amazing is, of course, because of Andrew Robinson, so I would never want to take that away. But um, to bring a character like that back would be would be really fun. I, I just think it's just a fun, interesting character. You don't really see a lot of characters like that mm. on television. Definitely. Just awesome. Especially during the 90s. Like That was a, as a bold yeah. move to make. So we're going to say, hey, Andrew, Noah says he can play Garrick better. Would you like to come on our show and respond to him? Maybe yes. we can Fair get that enough. working. Fair enough. Okay, how, how did you feel when you found out you were going to be playing an Andorian since they haven't been represented much outside of Enterprise? I was really excited, you know, because playing something like a Klingon or a Vulcan, it's, it's awesome, but it's a lot of pressure for a Star Trek fan, and it's a lot of research, you know, like... Mm -hmm you really want to do right and understand what you're getting yourself into. And like even having a, a fairly decent understanding of Star Trek and Star Trek canon, um, just having to, you know, so early on I auditioned for the role of, of Spock, which went to Ethan and oh, wow. uh, yeah. And, and it was super fun to audition for and watching Ethan work on season two when i was on set with him it's just like oh yeah you're the dude this is awesome like you're killing it and it's just I his also back. It's his massive back intimidate you <laughs> <laughs> he's amazing um, and voice, you know a, a, but but what i'm trying to say is that i would have moments you know after i shot it where i'd like wake up in bed and be like oh was i andorian and enough <laughs> and just trying to imagine having to think if I was Spock enough, I would absolutely fold under that sort of pressure. I wouldn't be able to handle it, and it would crush me. And I sort of feel that way about a lot of other Star Trek races. But what was amazing about Andorians was, like, there was they're so iconic. You know, there's such an iconic thing, but there's, what, 15 episodes where they're featured? Maybe up until, of course, like, Lower Decks and, and Discovery have come out. You know, now it's. I think all the writers are saying, "Whoa, whoa, what the hell are these guys doing here? We have this iconic race <laughs> that nobody has really, you know, delved into." You know, of course, with with the ANR on on Strange New Worlds or whatever. So obviously now right. it's like, oh, we we we're this is a gold mine here. But back then it was just Jeff. You know what I mean? It was just Jeffrey, <laughs> and um, and uh, and it was awesome to feel like. It can really be a part of canon. You know what I mean? Like mm. every choice I make ha is canonical in a cool way, as opposed to, you know, a choice you might make where the Vulcan is like, well, that's that Vulcan. This is like, well, there's only two of us right now. There's, I guess, in, there's like three, three and a half, you know? So if I do something or I say something, then uh, Susie Plax is outraged at this comment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's so not a lot of us. Did that sort of add extra pressure? Like, did you look at what 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 Jeffrey didn't say? Okay, I'm going to try to mimic that, or did you say, well, I can kind of do my own thing now because there's there's really only Shran out there for for large parts. Well, I watched all of his episodes, um, and I definitely did not want to turn away from what he had done but 
the issue that I was struck with was that they're very different characters, you know, mm -hmm. Rin and Shran. They're just they're just very different characters. And I thought a lot about, um, you know, what are Andorians even about? Like, what is he trying to do with this character? You've got twelve episodes of him, this little arc of him in Enterprise. What is he actually trying to do, either consciously or unconsciously? You know, I don't know. Maybe Jeffrey just showed up on the day and was like, I'm gonna you know, he always talks about them I'm being awesome. Irish Lovely. and the Vulcans <laughs> being English, you know. So like I don't know if I can use that. But one thing I was think I think a lot about Star Trek races is that and the, and, and in terms of like approaching them as an actor, which I think is useful, is that Star Trek races, including humans, I don't like to think of them as like embodying a different part of humanity mm. uh, because I don't think that's really true or useful, especially as an actor. I think about what they present and then what they're covering. So like Vulcans present this super logical, emotionless front, but we all know they're covering these insane, wild emotions. Klingons prevent this like battle lust and blood lust, but really they're covering this sort of sense of honor and community. And for Andorians, my take on Jeffrey's performance, which is just my take, uh, is that he's presenting this blustering, confident, badass, which he is, but he's sort of covering the sort of sensitive, emotional, deeply felt being, um, which I think is sort of his arc in Enterprise. He starts as like this mm. badass military commander and he ends as just being like, I just love my daughter and I need her back. Mm. Um, and so what I tried to do was sort of reverse engineer that. So like when we meet Rin, he's where Shran ends, right? He is at his lowest. He's like lost his sort of bat. He's lost his cover, right? He's lost being a badass. He's lost the sort of the Andorian swagger. And he's just sort of open and raw. You know, there's like, there's no cover. He's not trying to put a happy face on it. He's, he's trying to recover his Andorianness in that way. And I think his journey in the show is ends with him being like, you know what? I am a badass. Eat shit, Osira. I don't care if you kill me. <laughs> um, I, I've got, yeah. I've got my mojo back and I'm ready to get blasted. So in that sense, that was sort of what I took from his performance and sort of his, uh, his, his authorship of Andorians. Yeah. It's a, uh... Of course, in preparation, I had to rewatch uh, your episodes, and <laughs> you you do notice that even though you start out as very different characters, um, by the end of it, you can see that sort of defiance in the strong chin, and I'm like, oh, that's I'm, I'm seeing mm -hmm. the parallels there. So, yeah, that's good. That's <laughs> good. Um, where are we? Where are we? Uh, so, yeah, pretty much, you've answered a lot of all our community questions, but now it's been great. Um, uh, you you ask okay I have one question and then I want to hear uh, you asking about the Kickstarter. Uh, uh, everyone loves everyone loves Grudge the cat from Discovery, <laughs> and and there's a scene where you're you're acting with with Grudge kind of in your lap, and sometimes pets are notoriously hard to you know they have their own mind about things. What what was that like? Did she run away from you at any point or? I hate working with that cat. It was <laughs> absolutely miserable. It's not. Listen, I don't blame the cat. But that is not a trained cat. That's just okay. somebody's big ass cat. <laughs> there's no training involved in this cat. There's, no, there's, it's, it was, you know, in that scene, it's supposed to comfort me and like be my friend. I'm supposed to calm down. It doesn't happen. The cat jumps on me, and then I, I throw it because it's, it's useless. And it's because, it, so, so if you watch the scene, there's like this barely cut where it like jumps on my lap but if you if you look at the cut it's just like a cat moving because one of the crew threw it into my lap because there was no way in hell it was going to jump in my lap and then the whole time i'm i'm holding it to my chest by the end of the day my arms were sore from from locking it to my chest because it so desperately wanted to run away <laughs> in the script it's supposed to calm me down or whatever and jonathan was directing it was like jonathan I, this cat's not going to calm me down it, it's it is hissing at me my costume is covered in claw marks 
uh, can I just throw this cat and just like move on with the scene? And he was like, yes, absolutely. <laughs> so I sort of just like let go of the cat and throw it onto the console. It runs into its little box and I move on. Um, it was, it was, it, I think the biggest scam Star Trek has ever pulled is promoting <laughs> grudge as, Oh man, I bet the as, book of grudge makes you quite physically sick, man. <laughs> I'm in it too. It's so annoying. <laughs> oh no. Nobody got my input on that. Uh, and, 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 and then like three episodes later, David's like, Oh, there's two grudges now. So if one gets tired, I'm like, I was doing the scene where it had to like, you know, we were in the uh, firefight. And I only got one grudge. There's not a second grudge. I don't know. They, they, they Where's really, the second uh, rin? Where's the second rin for the first grudge? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So uh, I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was a wild day, uh, and um, yeah, that was that was that. No. I'm uh two more two more questions for you and we'll, we'll let you go um you you've just finished a very successful kickstarter campaign based on uh, your type 1 diabetes diagnosis um with some other star trek alums can you tell us a bit more about it yeah so it's a short film called type one um it's a movie about a type 1 diabetic and his wife who after some societal disaster go in search of insulin before it's too late i'll be in the leading room Mary Wiseman, my darling wife, will be in the leading role, and Anthony Rapp is directing it. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, we're really excited about it. Mm. It's going to be hopefully good and not bad. Fingers <laughs> crossed. Um, and it was a really amazing Kickstarter campaign. You know, the Star Trek community really showed up. The diabetes community really showed up, and then the crossover between the Star Trek and the diabetes community was amazing mm. as well. Um, which was which was just awesome, and we are, you know, plugging away at it, making all the kind of appropriate hires to bring people on, uh, and um, and uh, yeah, we're hoping to shoot it in May, so we're really excited, and it's I'm in completely over my head. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Otto. You've you've got something you're desperately wanting to ask. I do. Oh, I guess I did put that one there. Were, were you allowed to keep the wig, the flowing white hair? Uh, no, no. I only was allowed to keep a, a bit of my headpiece. So I have oh, the really? headpiece in, in a box back there with my cutoff antenna, but they didn't let me keep the wig. The wig was kind of, it was kind of nasty. You know what I mean? Like it, it wasn't like, Flowing and light and beautiful. It was kind You're of like be on the next L'Oreal and, advert. <laughs> yeah, and like the you know, I got shot like four times, and so there's all this goop in there, and it would get in my mouth, and it gets you know, it would stick to the paint on the mask. It was it was kind of I was happy to get I was happy to be gone, <laughs> done with that. the wig. Uh, I loved no. it, but I was happy to be done with it. Brilliant. Uh, Noah, thank you so much for joining us and helping us support Mind uh, this week. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on, and I'm always very grateful for your journey. Uh, tell me, where can people find you if they want to watch your stream? They can find me at Type 1 Trekkie on Twitch, or come watch us on Disco Does d d today. It'll be fun. We'll all hang out. Excellent. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for joining us. Um, eternally grateful you've given up your time for this, and uh, hopefully we'll chat soon. Um, Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Absolute pleasure. Uh, everyone watching, we're just going to cut away uh, and we will be back very shortly.